started, I actually moved here in, uh, at the very end of 1997. I uh, graduated from Berkeley College of Music just before that. And I uh, came here basically because I saw the options if you really wanted to make a living. You had three choices. You had New York, you had L.A., or Nashville. And I had a friend of mine who was coming down here with me to Nashville, and I kind of came with him. I was here for maybe 12 hours and was sold. I said, yeah, this, is, this feels right. So here I am, uh, 12, oof, almost 13 years later. Um, but uh, did the whole cycle thing, you know, went through and met people and also went to, uh, you know, different events trying to basically get immersed in the music scene. Uh, the one advantage I did have when I first got here was that there's a lot of people that I went to college with who were already here, somewhat established. They were just kind of getting their start since we graduated about the same time. But they had, you know, maybe about a year ahead of me already kind of immersed in the local scene. And that's kind of where things started and things snowballed since then in a good way. What was it about Nashville when you're, you're just those 12 hours? What sold you? I, you know, the biggest thing for me was just it just felt right was the best thing. I had been to New York City and I had been to L.A. as well. But and, you know, you see those things a lot more in a high profile type of situation, especially in the media. Uh, Nashville, you come here and just kind of I grew up in Florida, actually, and it, it wasn't too dissimilar to where I grew up. Uh, obviously, the weather's a little bit uh, not as hot, shall we say. I mean, you actually have a change of seasons. But uh, just the overall vibe, the nice, the, the friendliness of the people here are great, uh, especially in this kind of business where it's all built on relationships. You really want to look for something like that, and that kind of thing entices you to say, all right, this is where I want to make my stand and you know, have a go at it. Well, actually, uh, you know, it's, it's funny because I, I, to me, I have this philosophy of a good musician is a good musician is a good musician. Regardless, obviously we have our specialties or whatnot, but uh, I've uh, always been somebody that has enjoyed all different styles ever since growing up. I mean, my first, I always tell people in interviews that my first uh, musical influence was John Williams, you know, the com film composer, because mm -hmm. that's what I listened to growing up from my dad. And uh, rock came later, and then country as well. As far as going from one genre to the next, I actually came here first and was playing with local country acts. I, I used to play with uh, Laura Darling and Jess Leary, just mm -hmm. being a hit songwriter here in town and uh, they were kind of more in the country realm, obviously. But then just doing a session, actually the way the rock thing kind of came to fruition uh, was I was doing a session at a studio for a Jewish rock band, uh, something a little bit different off the beaten path you wouldn't necessarily think you'd find in Nashville. Um, and the uh, engineer had told the producer of this rock band called High Action Cop about me. They were needing somebody to do the tracks on the record and initially it wasn't like, hey, do you want to join the band? It was like, hey, can you come in and play on the record? And uh, they had seen my back and like, well, you know, he's done some country work and he's done some rock and he loves rock, but we'll give him a shot. And it just worked out really well. And shortly thereafter, they asked me after a couple demos to join the band full on. And that evolved quickly within, I would say, four or five months. We had A&R reps from all over the country, including here from all the major labels scoping us out. And we eventually signed to Lava Atlantic in, uh, what was that, October of, uh, no, sorry, August of 2001. Mm -hmm. uh, the record came out in, uh, actually not until the beginning of 2003. We had a song that made the charts in modern rock, and I think it peaked out at about 30 here. Went top 10 in Germany, Japan, and Australia, and was placed in four or five different major motion pictures, uh, about three different TV shows, and two video games. So that kind of helped uh, propel our career, as it were, throughout 2003, touring on the Lollapalooza tour, opening for other bands, going around the country and just hoofing it, really. Um, and then going from the rock realm to the country realm, when that was all said and done, we wrapped at the end of 2003, and the band was kind of on hiatus, and it was a situation to where I had some control, obviously, but being kind of almost a hired gun member, I really didn't have 100% control. Uh, and investing that much time into being in a band. And it's nothing wrong with it. It's just something I was seeking. So I was looking to branch out, and I wanted to be that guy who uh, would vacillate between, say, country, rock, jazz, uh, Latino music, which I also grew up doing. And just started uh, from then on out, just uh, kind of left the band. And uh, I did record their second record for them as a session musician again, but then went out and just started becoming a uh, hired gun for people like Lila McCann, Megan Mullins, um, Jimmy Wayne, of course, now who I play with, and Jamie O'Neill, and uh, various other people doing showcases around town that had known me from country stuff I'd done prior to Hot Action Cop, which is a good thing. But 
the hot action cop experience did help in the sense of saying well we want somebody that has a slightly different background so we don't have the cookie cutter mm -hmm. uh, guy who normally comes in and plays the country which there's nothing wrong with it like I said everybody has their specialties but that kind of set me apart from a lot of these other players in a, and I hopefully in a good way well with Jimmy Wayne it was an interesting thing and this is a, a, a good case in point where the most minor meetings and minor little sessions gigs you might do lead to something else because everything that I've done in a good way even the hot action cop thing did start from something that you wouldn't put two cents to and think oh this will lead to nothing or this is not a big thing or whatever uh, a friend of mine is uh, Johnny Richardson who's a drummer and a good friend who we work with prior with another artist named Chip Green who's also a Berkeley grad I'd known from before you I think you know Chip as well mm -hmm. and um, Johnny just said one day he started playing with uh, country artist Jimmy Wayne who's had a few hits and uh, around I think it was February of 2009 I get a call from him and saying hey uh, question for you do you have a passport that was the way it started I'm like okay where's this going sure yes I do have a passport it's like well can you come in and uh, play these four shows two of them in Canada for Jimmy Wayne and I said I'd love to I'd love to play with you again uh, Johnny and I get along great I've heard of Jimmy and really liked what he was doing, him being a country artist with a very R&B soul background, which really appealed to me. So those four shows turned into my audition, if you will. Uh, they told me on the bus ride home from the last gig, uh, we uh, are looking to uh, fill the bass slot and we really like what you've done. If this uh, is the case, are you interested? And I said, yes. About a week later, I get a call from management offering me the gig and that was it. Uh, Johnny Richardson is the band leader for uh, Jimmy Wayne, so he kind of has the say-so, um, consulting with Jimmy, obviously, on placement of members and who comes in and suggesting people. So I was at the top of his radar, which is a good thing because we had worked and got along very well before, and mm -hmm. that's how it led to that.